After the successful confession, Willow was always very busy. She was the little princess cherished by everyone, needing to socialize, dance, and host parties. Naturally, she didn't have time to do some trivial things with me. It was always her sister who was asked to accompany me on her behalf. Even before the wedding, on the day of the wedding dress trial, she was busy supporting her beloved guitar boy and sent her sister over. I'm about the same size as Anna. Let her try it for me later. When she finally finished her work and came to find me, she happened to bump into her sister knocking on my door in the middle of the night. Brother-in-law, open the door. It's me. My sister, she was furious, but I was holding her sister and laughing softly. Willow, don't make a fuss. You always lie to me, my sister's figure is much better than yours. On the day of the wedding dress trial, Willow did not appear in the wedding dress shop. I sat on the sofa in the wedding dress shop, quietly watching the direction of the door. I was hoping that Willow could push that door open, appear in front of me, and then put on the wedding dress we chose together. It's just a pity. For a full three hours, that door was closed. It was also three hours later that I received a call from Willow. George, I have something temporary today. I can't go to try on the wedding dress. I've asked my sister to go. Her figure is similar to mine. Don't worry. The words I wanted to say, the questions I wanted to ask, were all stuck in my throat at that moment. Okay, I answered her softly followed by the sound of the phone hanging up. The lights in the wedding dress shop were really dazzling, so dazzling that my vision blurred, leaving only a white light. Even the whispers of the shop assistants, I couldn't hear clearly. I have liked Willow for 10 years, from the moment we met. She gave me a piece of candy, and left a permanent mark in my fragile heart. I was a sickly child, my health was not good since childhood, so I didn't have many friends, Occasionally I would be mocked by other children, which made my personality very withdrawn. I was dull, didn't like to talk, and didn't like to interact with people. My only friend was a golden retriever I picked up. Willow was the first person to take the initiative to talk to me. Once when I was about to faint from low blood sugar, she gave me a piece of candy, an orange-flavored fruit candy, which was filled with a sweet taste from the moment I put it in my mouth. She smiled like a fairy, a fairy tale reaching out to me, is it sweet? Very sweet. That piece of candy is the sweetest one in my childhood memories. Willow is also the only bright existence in my childhood. She would accompany me to walk the dog, share half of her favorite cake with me, and stand firmly in front of me, and others laughed at me. She was always like this, appearing when I needed her most, reaching out to pull me out of the mire. But childhood and growing up are always different. Willow was cheerful and lively, like a little son, always able to attract many people. So the time she spent with me became less and less. Her life was rich, with other pleasures, and other people. So much so that even the day, he agreed to try on the wedding dress was missed. The door of the wedding dress shop opened. Anna walked in with her high heels and stood in front of me. George, my sister asked me to try on the wedding dress for her. I nodded dot dot the attendant then led Anna into the dressing room. In a short while, the curtain was opened, and Anna was in a white floor-length fishtail dress, her long hair casually tied up, with two strands of wavy hair hanging down, her skin was white, her eyes were sparkling, she was not wearing any jewelry, but she was still beautiful and noble. Anna came to my side, and looked at us in the mirror with me, she smiled faintly. This wedding dress matches your suit. I was about to nod in response, this was the wedding dress, is I myself, specially customized for me and Willow's wedding. But she spoke again, but this wedding dress, it doesn't really suit Willow. I looked at her in the mirror with some surprise, for a moment, I didn't understand what she meant by that. Anna continued, Willow is lively, she is the little princess held in the palm of her parents' hands, so she prefers princess dresses with large skirts. George, this wedding dress and her, they don't really match, Anna's words really shocked me. In my impression, she is a very cold person, rarely speaks, and rarely deals with others. When Willow took me to her house to play when we were young, Anna was always very busy. If she wasn't playing the piano, she was dancing. She seemed to have a lot of courses, filling every day with activities. In contrast, her sister, who is only two years younger than her, seems particularly free and easy. As for me, Anna hardly spoke to me, 
Our first exchange was also because of Willow. That was the day of my regular checkout every three months. Willow promised to go with me. But that day, she stood me up. She didn't tell me why. Nor did she tell me that she had asked Anna to accompany me. So, when Anna showed up at the hospital, I was very surprised. She was very calm, took the form from my hand, and walked towards the examination room on her own. That day, Anna accompanied me all day. She would personally ask the doctor about every examination, in great detail, so careful that some of the questions she asked I hadn't even thought of myself. It wasn't until all the examinations were over and she heard the doctor say that everything was healthy, just a bit weak, and that I just needed to take more supplements, that she breathed a sigh of relief. Anna casually brushed her hair behind her ears and handed me the folded form. Her deliberately softened voice was particularly pleasing. George, take good care of your health. I nodded. You went to a lot of trouble today. Anna also nodded, smiled and said, Why don't you treat me to a meal? In my surprise, I still agreed to her request. After all, a whole day of examinations was indeed very tiring. That day was the first time I had dinner with a girl other than Willow. Anna is indeed very different from Willow. She doesn't talk incessantly during meals. Nor does she always have a lively smile on her face. If Willow is a lively fairy, then Anna is like a moon goddess, noble and cold. 4. After trying on the wedding dress, Anna didn't leave straight away as she used to. She leaned lazily against her car, letting the slight evening breeze blow her fluffy curls. George, why don't you come with me to a place? Maybe it can clear up your doubts. I looked at her. She looked at me too. The difference was. I was surprised that she could think of what I was thinking. And in her eyes, there was teasing. There was an elusive smile. Anna seemed to be sure of my thoughts, opened the car door and got in. Indeed, she guessed right, I really wanted to know. I got in the passenger seat, we were very in sync, we didn't talk all the way. I didn't ask her where she wanted to go, and she didn't ask me why I chose to believe her. So we were silent all the way, with only the sound of the wind whistling by. The car stopped by the sea, and I saw Willow, who had stood me up. She was barefoot on the soft sand singing a beautiful song with a microphone in her hand, and her gaze, soft as water, fell on the boy playing the guitar next to her. Their eyes met, turning into silent tenderness. I don't know why, but I felt that they were a strangely good match. A lively and cute girl and a sunny guitar bow, indeed, they were a better match than a dull and weak bow. At the end of a love song, the people around cheer and clat, they shouted loudly, kiss, kiss. Willow smiled, tiptoed, and gave the boy a light kiss on the lips. She looked at the boy shyly and said softly, Happy birthday, Makoto. Compared to the bustle over there, it was indeed very quiet here, I even felt a bone-chilling cold all over my body. Aina's soft voice sounded, more like a tease. I told you, your wedding dress doesn't match her, I turned my head, let's go. Anna seemed very surprised, aren't you going to ask a question? I shook my head. Knowing the answer is enough. In fact, I knew it a long time ago. Every time Willow stood me up, it was for the same person, a man named Makoto. He was Willow's college classmate, not only handsome, but also very good at playing the guitar. He was considered a popular figure in their school. They prepared for the school celebration together, performed on stage together, and were jokingly referred to as a golden boy and jade girl by their classmates. When such words reached my ears, Willow just hugged me and kissed me twice. George, don't listen to them. In my heart, only my George and I are the best match. But when she said this, she was still wearing the bracelet that Makoto had given her. A simple string, but it was soft from the most popular temple by Makoto. It was said to be able to bring safety. The little princess, who always liked pearls and jewels, changed her usual delicate demeanor and wore the bracelet on her hand. She told me, after all, it's someone's intention, it's not good to disappoint. And then this bracelet, she has been wearing it, until now she never takes it off, compared to the bustle over there. It was indeed very quiet here, I even felt a bone-chilling cold all over my body. Aina's soft voice sounded, more like a tease, I told you, your wedding dress doesn't match her. I turned my head, let's go. Anna seemed very surprised. Aren't you going to ask a question? I shook my head. Knowing the answer is enough. In fact, I knew it a long time ago. 
Every time Willow stood me up, it was for the same person, a man named Makoto. He was Willow's college classmate, not only handsome, but also very good at playing the guitar. He was considered a popular figure in their school. They prepared for the school celebration together, performed on stage together, and were jokingly referred to as a golden boy and jade girl by their classmates. When such words reached my ears, Willow just hugged me and kissed me twice. George, don't listen to them. In my heart, only my George and I are the best match. But when she said this, she was still wearing the bracelet that Makoto had given her. A simple string, but it was sought from the most popular temple by Makoto. It was said to be able to bring safety. The little princess, who always liked pearls and jewels, changed her usual delicate demeanor and wore the bracelet on her hand. She told me, after all, it's someone's intention, it's not good to disappoint. And then this bracelet, she has been wearing it, until now she never takes it off. On the way back, Anna was still the one who drove me, halfway through, she suddenly spoke. George, have you thought it through? I was stunned for a moment, and asked, what? Anna stopped the car and looked at me sideways. Her expression was as serious as the first time I saw her looking at the piano sheet music. George, have you thought about marrying Willow? Such a question left me speechless. Once, I was absolutely sure that Willow was my bride. I had fantasized countless times about her walking towards me step by step in a white wedding dress. But now, it seems I'm not sure. I'm not sure if her heart is still with me. I'm not sure if she still wants to be my bride as she used to. After a moment of silence, Ana's voice rang out again. Very light, very soft, very firm. George, why don't you consider me? In fact, I'm a better match for you. The moonlight shone through the car window onto her face and fell into her eyes, and she just looked at me quietly. I don't know why, but at that moment my heart skipped a beat. The image of Anna in that wedding dress standing next to me came to mind. She does seem to be a better fit for the fishtail wedding dress, is Ind. Not long after I got home, Willow's call came in. George, open the door. When I opened the door, Willow had already changed her clothes. The blue skirt she wore while singing on the beach had been replaced with a white princess dress. She was holding a cake, and the moment I opened the door, she stood on tiptoe and hugged me. Good George. Do you miss me? She didn't notice that this time, I didn't wrap my arms tightly around her waist. Willow let go of me and walked straight in, opened the strawberry cake, and looked at me with her cheek in her hand. I also went to sit opposite her. The strawberry cake seemed particularly glaring at this moment. Is this Makoto's birthday cake? Willow was stunned, instantly panicked, and her face turned pale. George, let me explain. I said softly, explain what? Explain that you went to Makoto's birthday today, regardless of our appointment to try on wedding dresses, or explain the kiss on the beach with Makoto. I lowered my eyes and then looked up at the bright full moon hanging outside the window. Willow, have you forgotten? Today is the five-year anniversary of us being together. That's why I chose to try on wedding dresses today. Originally, I wanted to add a touch of romance and happiness to our five years of relationship. I didn't expect that it would be against my wishes in the end. Willow on the side was completely stunned, and her eyes turned red in an instant. She subconsciously wanted to hold my hand, but I avoided it. Her hand hanging in midair trembled slightly, followed by a powerless drop. George, I'm sorry. I looked at her with eyes full of sorrow and heartache, and spoke very calmly. Willow, let's break up. When you chose to leave me for another man over and over again, your heart had already changed, hadn't it? Five years ago today, we fell in love with each other, so we chose to be together. But five years later today, our feelings have been mixed with impurities, they are no longer cure, so we should part ways. Looking at how calm I was, Willow knew I was serious, the night was quiet. Willow got up in a daze, she didn't dare to look into my eyes, she just said softly, George, I'll go first. I'll come to you after you've calmed down. And so, she hurriedly disappeared into the night. The gradually fading shadow also disappeared from my sight bit by bit. It's midnight. Our love will become a thing of the past. People always like to reminisce about the past when they lose something. I don't know why, but I suddenly thought of the past. In the past, when Willow was full of me in her heart and eyes, at that time, she would wait for me at the door of my classroom after school, affectionately holding my arm without caring about the eyes of others. 
She would also openly express her love for me. She would stand at the school gate, holding a bunch of bright sunflowers and yelling my name loudly. George, you will always be the best in my heart. I love you. Willow loves George. Even if the teacher was standing there, she was still flamboyant and confident, running down the long road holding my hand. The gentle setting sun shone on her radiant smile, and also on my pounding heart. I thought she would keep holding my hand, through sunrise and sunset, spring and autumn. Unfortunately, she met Makoto in college. The first time I saw Makoto was at the rehearsal for their school's anniversary celebration. Makoto took off his coat and put it on Willow's lap. He laughed brightly and said to me, Willow really is a special girl. She's lively, cheerful, confident and bright, always able to attract people's attention unintentionally. To be honest, I'm very envious of you to have her. Makoto looked at me with sincere eyes, without any hint of provocation or instigation. But from that moment on, I felt a sense of unease in my heart. Out of a man's intuition, I was absolutely certain that he liked Willow. Now it seems that I didn't guess wrong. But I didn't guess completely right either. I never thought that Willow would have feelings for Makoto. I thought that we had known each other for 10 years and been in love for 5 years, and our relationship was already unbreakable. Only now do I understand that love is so fragile. Willow seemed to have completely forgotten about that day. She knocked on my door early the next morning with my favorite toast bread. George, I know you love the toast from this place, so I went to buy it early in the morning. She pulled me to sit at the dining table and carefully spread strawberry jam on the toast for me. Dot dot. When she handed it to me, there was a hopeful glimmer in her eyes. I looked at her, and in the end, I took the toast. Visibly, Willow let out a sigh of relief. She was back to being cheerful and happy, with the same smile on her face as before. Willow loves to smile, and I love her smile, but at this moment, I can't feel happy for getting her smile anymore. Because I know clearly that everything she is doing now is to make up. Make up for the broken promise that day, make up for the changed sincerity that these days, in a daze, make me think we are still the same as before. In our life, there has never been a person named Makoto. Almost, I thought I could grab my happiness again. That evening, Willow received a call. In just a moment, her relaxed and cheerful expression became serious, full of worry. After hanging up the phone, she hurriedly changed her shoes and went out, but at the moment of opening the door, she remembered me, who was busy cooking a table of dishes in the kitchen. She said, George, I have some urgent matters to deal with, I'll be back soon. You don't have to wait for me, eat first, she left in a hurry. She didn't care about my pale face, nor did she wait for my response. What she left me was just the sound of the door slamming. After Willow left, I just sat at the dining table in a daze. The table full of carefully prepared meals, at this moment, was also hard to swallow. I don't know how long I sat there. Anyway, when the door knock sounded, the food on the table had already cooled down. Anna came. She was holding a bottle of champagne. I was a bit surprised, looking at the exquisite woman in front of me in astonishment. I didn't have much to do with her. Every time we met, she was there to accompany me instead of Willow. Once to accompany me to the hospital, once to try on the wedding dress for her. And then there was the time, when Anna accompanied me to the designer's dinner. That time, Anna was also dressed up, beautiful as if the moon goddess had descended. She gently held my arm and talked with the other designers with ease. She seemed to be very good at socializing and knew a lot about design. She could always perfectly convey my design concepts and ideas to others in a few words, and even some small insights she proposed would add a finishing touch to the already good works. Anna looked at my exhibited works and sincerely exclaimed, Your works always resonate with me deep inside. They are amazing. George, you are a great designer. At that time, some people thought she was my girlfriend and praised me for having a soulmate. I was at a loss, but she just smiled at me. After the banquet, I apologized to her, Miss Liu, they misunderstood, I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but Anna just swirled her wine glass and smiled charmingly. I don't find it inconvenient, George, Anna walked straight in. She took off her beautiful high heels and stepped barefoot on the soft carpet. She waved the champagne at me, maybe, you'd want to have a drink. I was a bit incredulous, 
Did you come all this way just to have a drink with me? Anne opened the champagne on her own, took out two wine glasses from the cabinet, poured herself a glass, and drank it all. I think you probably need alcohol to get drunk today. She was right. Willa went to find Makoto again. She received that call, thinking I didn't hear it in the kitchen, although it was intermittent. I understood seven or eight points. Makoto was sick, lying at home refusing to go to the hospital. It was his friend who called Willow, hoping she could persuade Makoto. There was one sentence I heard very clearly. Willow, you know, Makoto always listens to you the most. Just like that, a simple sentence instantly destroyed the illusion of a good time. Leaving me alone, still immersed in the memories of the past. It's a bit funny. I took the wine glass from Anna and clinked glasses with her. The crisp sound of glass collision made the liquid in the glass ripple. Before long, I felt dizzy. I rarely drank before. Anna suddenly leaned in close to me, putting her hand on my shoulder. Her delicate features were gorgeous and extraordinary. The tear mole at the corner of her eye made her look whole and noble. And because of the slight drunkenness, it added a few unintentional charms. I stood there, staring at her in a daze. But she hugged my neck and got closer to me. She asked me softly, George, do you think I'm pretty? Her breath was right in front of me, hot and burning. For some reason, I nodded involuntarily. Anna smiled. Her voice was like a charm. Why don't we sleep together tonight? Anna kissed my lips, passionate and lingering. She held my face, making me look at her. George, look at me closely. I'm not worse than her. I'm better suited for you. Anna's hand unbuttoned my shirt one by one and wrapped around my waist. The shirt scattered on the floor and her aqua blue dress mixed together, ambiguous and entangled, making the room full of charm. The moonlight coming in from the window shone on our tightly hugging bodies, making the ambiguous atmosphere clearer. Anna pressed against me tightly. She whispered softly, Can I, George? I nodded and carried her into the bedroom. When I woke up, it was already noon. The warm sunlight came in through the thin window gauze and fell on the white body. Anna was lying obediently in my arms, like a gentle kitten. She rubbed her sleepy eyes, her voice becoming sticky. Are you awake? I was about to nod when the bedroom door was pushed open. Willow stood at the door of the room, her eyes red with anger. What are you doing? George, what are you doing? She looked at me, and I looked at her, but Anna was calm. She climbed on my neck and kissed my mouth. It seemed deliberate, revealing the traces of last night's madness in front of Willow. She raised her eyebrows at Willow, her lips curling up. Isn't it obvious what we're doing? Willow, from now on George is your brother-in-law. Willow, like a statue, stood there in a daze. A moment later, it was unstoppable tears. She pointed at me, then at Anna. You, you too, Anna. How can you flirt with your own sister's boyfriend, Anna? You have no shame. I'm going to have dad kick you out of the Liu family. Anna laughed coldly, her provocative gaze gradually sinking, replaced by undisguised coldness and hatred. Willow, it's you who didn't cherish, don't blame me. You don't deserve George's affection for you all these years. You always liked me to replace you to accompany George, right? Then I'll replace you completely and stay by his side forever. Also, remember, we are not real sisters. We are just half-sisters with the same father. And besides, the Liu family belongs to my mother. It has nothing to do with you or your mother who is the mistress. Aina's voice was very soft and calm. But it was still like a thunderbolt, making the tense atmosphere instantly quiet and silent. I seemed to feel that when she was speaking, her hand hidden in the quilt was trembling involuntarily, especially when she mentioned her mother. Willow clenched her fists and turned to look at me. Two lines of tears flowed down. She looked really pitiful. George, you heard it. She deliberately seduced you. She, to retaliate against me, retaliate against my mom. George, she doesn't like you at all. I shook my head, picked up the pants on the floor and put them on, standing in front of Willow. I said seriously, Willow, we have already broken up, it has nothing to do with her, just, in the previous days, I thought we could get back together, but unfortunately, you still can't let go of Makoto, you left me again for him, then there is no need for us to continue entangling. Let's part on good terms, Willow, Willow turned pale, trembling as she screamed, George, who wants to part on good terms with you? 
You can only be mine. Willow left crying. Anna hugged me from behind, whispering my name. George, I pulled her hand away, picked up a large dress and wrapped her in it. You've achieved your goal, Anna. Anna frowned, looked at me with pursed lips, and said in a deep voice, George, I didn't use you, I'm sincere to you. Saying that, she paused. Her cold hand gently pulled up my hand. George, you believe me. I stared into her eyes, seeing only sincere affection in her eyes, without a trace of falso. It turns out that as long as the lie is serious enough, even the eyes can deceive people, I withdrew my hand and stepped back. The sunlight shone on her face, soft and beautiful. But through the gauze, it broke into pieces, Anna told me about the Liu family, about the deepest secret hidden in her heart. Originally, they were a happy family of three. But unfortunately, when she was five years old, her mother died in a car accident. Anna was very sad. She stayed by her mother's coffin for seven days, crying for more than seven days, less than three months later. Her father brought home the woman and daughter he had kept outside. Her so-called sister was already three years old. Because of Willa's arrival, Anna was forced to move out of her spacious and exquisite bedroom and into the guest room. The home that originally belonged to her became a paradise for other people's laughter and joke. Anna accidentally overheard her father and stepmother's conversation and learned that her mother's car accident was a joint plot by her father and stepmother in order to seize the company and property left by her grandfather to her mother. Since the age of five, she has learned to read people's faces, and she knows that she was young and weak at the time, so she can only suppress her overwhelming hatred and live with the wolves. However, since then, she could no longer have a happy childhood. She had to study harder, excel in everything, to gain her father's praise, to step by step into the company, and secure the position of general manager, as she spoke. I suddenly remembered some past events, in childhood, when I went to the Liu family to find Willow. Anna was quietly sitting in front of the piano practicing her pieces. And the dress she was wearing was an old model from a few years ago, which was a bit too small for her. The shoes on her feet were also slightly damaged. In contrast, Willow, who was wearing the latest princess dress, was indeed a princess surrounded by stars. At that time, when Willow saw me staring at Anna, she pulled me to go upstairs. When she mentioned her sister, her tone was mostly disdainful. She is just a bookworm. Ignore her. She studies so hard just to make dad happy. But no matter how hard she tries, I'm still dad's favorite daughter. Saying that, she took out a bag of dog food. George, I heard this is the best dog food. You take it back for cheddar. Cheddar is the golden retriever I picked up. After Anna finished speaking, her eyes were already most. Maybe it was because she remembered her mother who passed away early. I didn't speak, and there was only silence between us again. After a while, Anna stood up. The look in her eyes towards me was one of sorrow. George, so you don't believe me. It was not a question, but a certainty. So she didn't say much this time. She took her things and left my house. The moment the door closed, the room was incredibly quiet, so quiet that I could clearly hear my own heartbeat. And the meal that had been sitting there since last night was already cold. Just like my heart and my past, I don't know what Anna was thinking. She moved out of the Liu family and moved next door to me. The house that had always been empty suddenly had people. But she didn't come to my house again. And we basically didn't meet. She was busy with her work, going out early and returning late every day. And I was also busy with my career, working hard to participate in the designer competition. I successfully participated in the competition and won the silver award. Not only that, my work was also noticed by a well-known brand, which decided to sign a contract with me and planned to develop a sub-brand based on my work. The sudden surprise caught me off guard. But I still accepted this contract. Next, I was even busier. The new brand needs new works, and I am immersed in creation every day just hoping not to disappoint the people who value me. So when Willow and Makoto came to find me, I was very surprised. He was still wearing a casual t-shirt and ripped jeans, not much different from the young and sunny Bo two years ago, even a little more mature. But Willow, who has always loved beauty, looked a little haggard and tired. With dark circles under her eyes, Makoto got straight to the point. I know you have some misunderstandings about my relationship with Willow, but I still need to explain to you that we are innocent. 
I frowned slightly. I don't know how he had the nerve to say the word innocent. Innocent enough to kiss in a crowd. He seemed to see through my disgusted look and coughed awkwardly with his hand over his mouth. Willow quickly stepped forward and grabbed my hand. George, believe me. I truly love you. Anna wants revenge. She hates my mom for stealing my dad, so she wants to use the same method to revenge on me. Don't be deceived by her. She's not serious about you. You're just a tool for her revenge. She doesn't have you in her heart at all. I promise, I will never leave you again. I will love you well, George. Give me another chance, okay? Willow's voice was especially clear in the quiet room, word by word, like countless tiny needles piercing my heart. The beautiful days of the past, at this moment, were shattered. I suddenly felt regretful, the memories I once cherished, disappeared. Originally, I never regretted falling in love with Willow. Over the years, the happiness and Joshi brought me were real, and so was love. So I wanted to start over with the beautiful memories of the past. But now, she has destroyed my last duty. It was only now that I understood. In Willow's eyes, I was never a precious existence, I withdrew my hand from her tight grip and stepped back to steps. There's no possibility between us. Willow was stunned for a moment, staring at her empty hand, tears falling instantly. She choked and asked me, is it because of Anna? Are you in love with her? I sighed softly and shook my head. It has nothing to do with her. Willow, you destroy our years of feelings with your own hands. You are ambiguous with Makoto on one side and want to marry me on the other, but people can't want everything. The price of greed is nothing. Now you are desperately entangled, probably not because you love me so much, but because you can't stand the things that originally belonged to you being taken away by someone you've always looked down upon. It's your jealousy and possessiveness at work. Willow screamed loudly. No, it's not like that. I love you. I really love you. Compared to Willow's breakdown, I seemed incredibly calm and indifferent. If you really love me, what about Makoto? What does he count as? Willow trembled and looked at Makoto behind her now. The young man no longer had the spirit, only loss and sadness. She cried again, chokingly questioning me. So, you won't forgive me, will you? Now when I see her sad and upset, my heart is without a ripple. I nodded without hesitation, a spring ten years ago. I met Willow in the forest park. I was wandering aimlessly in the corner of the park with Cheddar. I don't know how long I had been playing, Suddenly everything went dark in front of me, and I almost fell in a daze. The little girl in the princess dress gave me an orange-flavored candy, which gradually woke me up from the dimness. She smiled at me and reached out to me. She asked me, is it sweet? I nodded. But what was sweet was not only the candy, also her dimples when she smiled, and the ripples in my heart that could not calm down for a long time. That year, I was 13 and Willow was 11. Five years later, I planted a garden of white tulips for Willow, and then designed a beautiful princess dress myself. I put a crown on her and dropped a light kiss on her cheek. Willow, would you like to be my girlfriend? What responded to me was her full smile and soft lips. Now, ten years later in deep autumn, we are going our separate ways. The new leaves that sprout in spring will eventually turn yellow in autumn and then disappear with the wind. After the new brand was established, the response was very good, so much so that I need to work harder to create, often too busy to even eat. So, on that day, I passed out due to low blood sugar. When I woke up, I was in the hospital. The one by my side was Anna, who lived next door but never met. Seeing me wake up, she handed me a glass of water. You're awake. She seemed to have something to say but stopped. It's just that look, I can't tell what it feels like. I took the glass of water and thanked her. Thank you. When I put down the glass, I saw a small cake on the side. Seeing my astonishment, Anna seemed a little embarrassed. Today is your birthday. I wanted to buy a cake for you, but I didn't expect to see you fainting at the front door. I've been so busy lately that I even forgot my own birthday, but I didn't expect Anna to remember. Perhaps seeing through my little thoughts, Anna said lightly, I always remember your birthday. The birthday gifts Willow gave you every year were prepared by me. I was shocked. The autographed photo of the designer I liked, the out-of-print music records, and the quota for becoming a top designer student, they were all prepared by Anna with great effort. 
and I mistook this one after another as Willow's, and then treated her doubly well, giving her my most sincere feelings. I looked into her eyes, why? Anna laughed softly, she's a spoiled little princess, where would she be willing to put so much thought into it, so she left it to me. Saying that, she paused, her robes tinged with a slight blush, her eyebrows curved like a moon, but, being able to prepare birthday gifts for you, I'm willing and happy. Such words made my heart soft, and attentively held my hand. George, would you be willing to believe me once? This time, I didn't let go of her hand. In the middle of the night, Anna knocked on my door. She called out in a languishing voice. Brother-in-law, open the door, I'm my sister. Such nonsense, it's not like something she could say she's drunk, but the drunk her is very much like a charming young girl in love, without the previous noble and cold temperament. When I opened the door, I pinched her slender waist, Anna, don't talk nonsense, saying that, I kissed her lips forcefully. After a lingering moment, Anna sobered up, she lay tiredly in my arms. Anna, I'm going abroad in a few days to participate in a design competition. If I can win, it will make my new brand more reputable. She nestled in my arms, but her hand was not on us and reached into my clothes. Okay, during the time I was abroad, Anna was not idle. I could always get some news about her from the internet. For example, she has deposed her father, who was the chairman of the board, and sued him for embezzlement. For example, her stepmother made a scene at the Liu group, cursing her, saying she was a black-hearted and filial daughter, who actually set up her own father. For example, after her father went to jail, she drove her stepmother and stepsister out of the house without giving them a penny, and to this day, her stepmother is still making a scene at the Liu's doorstep. But she never mentioned any of these news when she was video calling me. The side she left to me was always bright sunshine. Three months later, my work won another award. The brand company held a grand celebration banquet for me. Anna, who had promised to attend the banquet with me, failed to show up. George, I have something to deal with at the company. I can't accompany you. I'm sorry. The moment I saw the message, my heart unconsciously sank. Past events surfaced in front of my eyes again. Willow was also like this in the past, missing my important moments time and time again, but accompanying other men, am I going to repeat the same mistakes? I went to the celebration banquet in a daze and talked with my colleagues in a daze. George, do you know, the behind-the-scenes investor of our brand is also coming today. Look at you. What a big face you have. I was a bit surprised, I didn't know that our subran had a behind-the-scenes investor. I didn't know, just as I was talking. The brand's general manager took the stage, and under her introduction, the lights gathered on the stairs on the second floor. That's how Anna appeared in front of me. The light followed her steps, bringing her step by step to me. She held a bunch of white tulips in her hand. George, congratulations. Amidst the cheers, I took the bunch of white tulips. It was then that I realized that the entire banquet venue was decorated with white tulips. I still remember, a few years ago on Valentine's Day, Willow unusually gave me a bunch of red roses. She said that men can also have their own bunch of flowers. I accepted with a bitter smile. Of course, Willow was happy. It was Anna who, as if by accident, bumped into me, knocking the red roses in my hand to the ground and stepping on them twice. She pretended to apologize, these red roses are very tacky, George wouldn't mind, right? After a short separation, Anna is very clingy. She leaned on my shoulder, smiling and asking me if I wanted to hear her play the piano. At this time, the glow of the setting sun covered the earth, stretching our shadows very long, tinged with the red of the sunset. Anna's slender fingers jumped agilely and calmly on the black and white keys, the flowing music almost made people's breath follow its rhythm. I seemed to see a thin soft light on Anna, the white tulips on the piano were even more charming. I asked her how she knew I didn't like red roses, she pursed her lips and laughed. Because the day Willow gave you red roses, you frowned. Unfortunately, Willow only immersed herself in her so-called giving and didn't really understand what you need, what you really like, she paused and leaned closer to me. George, I've told you before, you and her, don't match. I was a little confused, Anna. I really can't understand where your feelings for me come from. In my memory, Anna is always cold and aloof, 
indifferent to everyone. She seemed to have never looked at me straight. Occasional brushes passed, she just glanced lightly. Anna squeezed my hand, her voice choked a little. Do you remember Cheddar? Cheddar, the golden retriever I picked up. It was also the first warmth of my lonely childhood. That day I was mocked by other kids as a sickly child. No one wanted to play with me. They laughed and ran away, leaving me alone, sitting alone under the green shade. The laughter gradually disappeared from my ears, leaving only the faint sound of the wind. That's when Cheddar appeared. It wagged its little tail, smiled at me, and its wet little tongue gently licked the back of my hand. It seemed to tell me that I was not alone. I held it and looked around, but couldn't find its owner. And it was especially clingy to me, so I adopted it and named it Cheddar. Before Willow appeared, Cheddar became my only playmate. Only it wouldn't laugh at me for being weak and wouldn't leave me alone to play. It was my most loyal companion. It was always by my side. But later, an accidental car accident took it away from me forever. Actually, Cheddar was a gift from my mother. Ana's voice was very soft. But it was like a loud noise emerging in the calm air. Unfortunately, my mother died in a car accident not long after she brought it home. And when that woman came in, she said she was allergic to dog hair and threw it away when I wasn't home. That day, I cried and looked for it in many places, but couldn't find it until I accidentally saw you, holding it in your arms, affectionately stroking its head. Then I understood, you should be more suitable to be sooner than me. She sighed. What can a person who can't even protect herself use to protect what she wants to protect? So later, I often secretly went to see Cheddar. Watching you play with it on the grass, it was very happy. And you were also very happy. That kind of smile. I haven't had for a long time. Anna pinched my shoulder, leaving ambiguous traces on my neck, she said. She knew me earlier than Willow, she said. The orange-flavored fruit candy that Willow gave me at the beginning was taken by her. She said, she had fallen in love with me a long time ago. We have the same loneliness and warmth. We are the most suitable people for each other, she said. George, our fate has already begun. A passionate kiss fell on my face lips, and also in my heart. I hugged her slender waist, taking the initiative, you're right. The fishtail wedding dress goes well with my suit, and you are the most suitable person for that wedding dress. In the bridal shop, in front of the transparent and bright mirror, the girl in the white fishtail wedding dress is holding the man in the black suit. Under the soft light, the man's gaze falls on the woman, looking at her without moving for a moment, the tenderness in his eyes almost overflowing making people feel that his heart and eyes are only her. George, let's get married. Anna, this wedding dress, you look beautiful in it.